The sham elections in the seized Ukrainian areas have been denounced by Ukraine's foreign ministry as worthless and lacking in legitimacy. This weekend, municipal elections will be held in annexations by the Russian government to further cement Moscow's dominance over those areas. The Donetsk, Luhansk, Kherson, and Zaporizhia areas have started voting, and it will end on Sunday. The Foreign Ministry of Ukraine has urged its allies to reject the elections and refuse to accept the results. Interior Minister Ir Klemenko reported that a Russian airstrike in the Kherson region resulted in the deaths of three civilians and the injuries of another four people. Klemenko posted on Telegram that the Kherson region had been shelled by the enemy. Three civilians, two women and a man, were murdered in Odrado Kamiansa by a Russian aircraft bomb. For locals suffered injuries. To reverse the effects of the shelling, investigative teams, forensic experts, rescuers, and volunteers are working. The Romanian government will approve a proposal to upgrade the road network in the Black Sea port of Constanta, which might facilitate the transportation of more grain from Ukraine. According to the draft project, the Transport Ministry will utilize EU money to introduce a digital traffic management system, develop new roads, access ramps, and roundabouts, as well as restore or strengthen the existing infrastructure in Constanta port. Prime Minister Marcel Sialica said at a government meeting that this was clear evidence Romania is making serious efforts to support Ukraine by enabling grain transit, but also to interconnect the region. The most important alternate export route for Ukraine is through Constanta, where grains are delivered by barge on the Danube, rail, or road. In the upcoming months, Romanian government representatives stated that they wanted to quadruple the monthly transit capacity of Ukrainian grain to Constanta to 4 million tons. Interior Minister Ir Klemenko reported that a Russian missile struck a police building in the city of Krivi Rih in central Ukraine, killing one police officer and injuring several others. President Volodymyr Zelensky's hometown was the site of the building's destruction, according to Klemenko on Telegram. A Russian attack resulted in the death of a policeman, Klemenko stated. Serhii Lysak, the regional governor, reported that the attack had injured roughly 40 people. Seven residential structures, including a high-rise building and three administrative buildings were also destroyed, according to Lysak. Russia launched 20 Iranian-made Shahid drones last night, the sixth attack this week on the Odessa region, but 16 of them were shot down by Ukraine's air force, according to officials. Ola Kuyper, the regional governor of Odessa, posted on Telegram that Russian terrorists attacked the Odessa region during the night for the fifth time this week. According to the military command for the south, two more drones were shot down over the Mykolaiv region in addition to the 14 that were shot down above Odessa. The drones were launched from Crimea and Russia, it was added. Since it abandoned the Black Sea Grain Agreement in July, Russia has increased airstrikes on Ukrainian grain export facilities along the Danube River and in the port of Odessa. Authorities in Cuba detained 17 persons on suspicion of participating in a human trafficking ring that recruited men to fight in the Russian army during the Ukraine war. Authorities stated earlier this week that they were attempting to neutralize and dismantle the network, which they claimed included operations both in Russia and Cuba. According to Cesar Rodriguez, a colonel with the Cuban Interior Ministry, as a result of the investigations, 17 people have so far been arrested, among them the internal organizer of these activities, he claimed Thursday night on a TV program. According to prosecutor Jose Luis Reyes, individuals responsible might get a life term in jail, the death penalty, or a sentence of up to 30 years. Cuban migrants wishing to flee economic hardships have historically looked to Russia, which has close political ties to Cuba.